a thread by Pat Scopoliti. 23 November 2020, MAGA analysis. Sidney Powell represents us. Hashtag I trust Sydney. Hashtag Sydney Powell represents me. What an amazing American story. First, she gives her all to saving General Flynn. Then she turns to fight the swamp over the greatest election steal ever. General Flynn tweets, Sidney Powell has been suspended from Twitter for 12 hours. She understands the White House press release and agrees with it. She is staying the course to prove the massive, deliberate election fraud that robbed we the people of our votes for President Trump and other Republican candidates. Pat continues, to my understanding, here's how the story begins. Rudy and Jenna decided to post a notification which, on first blush, looks like they're distancing themselves and the campaign from Sydney. From the statement, quote, Sidney Powell is practicing law on her own. She is not a member of the Trump legal team. She is also not a lawyer for the president in his personal capacity. November 22nd, 2020. Pat continues. What a phenomenal development. There are two immediate interpretations that arise. First, Jenna and Rudy appear to distance themselves from Sidney's work. Second... As opposed to distancing themselves, they are actually putting Sydney forward. Again, what a story. In case you haven't seen it for yourself, here is Sydney's statement on the topic. Quote, I agree with the campaign statement that I am not part of the campaign's legal team. I never signed a retainer agreement or sent the president or the campaign a bill for my expenses or fees. My intent has always been to expose all the fraud I could find and let the chips fall where they may, whether it be upon Republicans or Democrats. The evidence I'm compiling is overwhelming that this software tool was used to shift millions of votes from President Trump and other Republican candidates to Biden and other Democrat candidates. We are proceeding to prepare our lawsuit and plan to file it this week. It will be epic. We will not allow this great republic to be stolen by communists from without and within, or our votes altered or manipulated by foreign actors in Hong Kong, Iran, Venezuela, or Serbia, for example, who have neither regard for human life nor the people who are the engine of this exceptional country. Hashtag we the people. Elected Donald Trump and other Republican candidates to restore the vision of America as a place of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You may assist this effort by making a non-tax-deductible contribution to www.defendingtherepublic.org. Hashtag Kraken on steroids. Sidney Powell. Those are the facts of the story. We have to guess at the whys. Here's my most important guess. The entire federal apparatus of the United States is compromised. White House, Department of Justice, FBI, intelligence community, both houses of Congress, even SCOTUS, albeit less so now than before. The federal courts, etc. By White House, I do not mean POTUS. Rather, I mean the White House as the location of the executive branch of our government. Our executive branch has fought Donald Trump throughout his first term, and I guess there are powerful forces still at play there opposing him. If I'm right, it gives context to the Trump campaign statement. As opposed to distancing themselves, they are absolutely putting Sidney Powell forward. They're explaining that they work with her, but she is a 100% independent actor, not under their control. Let's stroll back to the $1.7 billion that Obama loaded onto a plane on pallets, flew them to Iran in the middle of the night, and all in foreign currency. Forget the $150 billion total. Focus only on the $1.7 billion. Why? Because it was absolutely illegal to the point of treason. And yet, 
The Obama apologists and protectors were able to convert this into a 100% legal act. No problem. Imagine that. Why send foreign currency and not simply wire the cash by normal measures? Because our sanctions against Iran made that almost impossible to do. Do you see? Any illegal act may be made legal by the D.C. Swamp's powers. And what exactly are those powers? They are the near-complete corrupt control over virtually every lever of government power. In the $1.7 billion all-in-foreign-currency case, it was the Treasury Department that provided Obama all the legal cover he might need. It's a painful read, but if you're interested, here's the AP version of the story. Link in the thread, apnews.com, U.S. payment of $1.7 billion to Iran made entirely in cash. Pat continues. So, picture a White House able to employ such mechanisms and the people who executed those orders. You have to picture this, and I'm going to help you. We're going to turn to medieval castles in order to illustrate. Castles work. They are extremely difficult to break into, yet there is always a weakness in even the greatest defensive system. In the back of a castle, there is often something called a postern gate. It's where food and supplies are allowed in. Soldiers are often dashingly handsome with all their daring do. They're often able to catch the eye of a pretty servant, typically a milkmaid. If the milkmaid opens the postern gate to the handsome soldier flirting with her, the enemy forces may then invade the castle. It is my understanding that the vast majority of castle defeats occurred this way, as opposed to all-out battle. Castles work, but a single milkmaid can defeat all the castle's power. To understand the D.C. swamp, you have to picture countless thousands of corruptible milkmaids. They permeate every office, staff, and department of our vast government. Each and every one of them has the power to defeat the castle of Fortress America. The Washington Post is something like the Milkmaids United Union of Government Employees. It is one of their great mouthpieces and megaphones. Here's their story on the topic. Link in the thread. Analysis to Washington Post. Was Obama's $1.7 billion cash deal with Iran prohibited by U.S. law? What's all this have to do with Sidney Powell, you ask? My theory is that the White House has realized cannot depend upon the D.C. swamp milkmaids to get the job done, to save America from criminal theft of our election, it's going to take an incorruptible outsider. Let's talk about money. Every dollar the White House pays to anyone for anything comes from taxes. It comes from us at metaphorical gunpoint. We have to pay taxes regardless of our consent. Dissent to paying taxes is illegal. We won't bring up Thomas Jefferson right now, right? The flow of tax dollars through the government to its minions is simply and absolutely corrupted. The D.C. swamp has leveraged players at every checkpoint, ensuring compliance with the swamp's mandates, and there's just no way to stop that on a dime. So... Here's my theory. Sidney Powell is not paid by tax dollars and has taken on America's case at her own risk. Risk? Yeah. She might spend every ounce of her time, energy, knowledge, and capability with no fee or payment at all. She is at 100% financial risk. This brings us to a familiar topic. If you followed the General Flynn case, with infinite resources, the government used every power it had to break this man, 
Not only did he rack up millions of dollars of legal debt, his entire financial life and well-being was on the line. No man is wealthier than the government. When the government decides to dedicate its full resources to the destruction of a man, what man can face that government in all its vast powers? When was the last time we heard about Paul Manafort? How is he doing right now? Our hero, Sydney, has dedicated every ounce of her ability to saving America from the loss of our democracy. A democracy may be stolen. A republic can't merely be stolen. It has to be destroyed. But one can easily buy the vote. This is the great risk of democracy. There is no way to overestimate the significance of Venezuela's story in all this. First, there was Cuba. Communism won Cuba. Try to imagine the significance of that. Having lost almost all its satellite nations, communism still held Cuba. And then along came Venezuela. How did communism take down this wealthy nation? None of us knew before. It always felt wrong, but after all, it was South America, and they're all crazy down there, so we allowed this. We have to linger there. Who? Who allowed this? He ascended in 1999, which places him under Clinton 1, but at the very end of his term. So Bush 43 obviously allowed communism to take control over Venezuela during his entire eight years. No need to discuss much about Obama and Venezuela, obviously. No one other than Sidney Powell would ever bring any of this up in real time America today. Hugo Chavez did not win the Democratic vote honestly. He stole it. How? With the help of the CIA and its technology. The CIA placed Chavez in power. Our CIA. By herself. Alone. Sydney is telling us that our American election of 2020 was stolen by the exact methods of Hugo Chavez's takeover of Venezuela. If you want a communist America, allow this travesty of an election. Stolen elections are the greatest power of communism. Let's talk about money again. Taking a case to court costs money. Courts are expensive. They are the abode of the great and the mighty. They, send, they tend to offer precisely as much justice as money can buy. Courts are money machines. Please know that. Sydney is taking the case of we the people to court at her own risk. It will cost millions upon millions of dollars to succeed. Court is expensive, and the D.C. swamp controls the courts. Imagine Sydney's risk. Her courage is to fight on, no matter what. What is the government? It has evolved into that power that demands our fees, our taxes, and then uses those fees to propagate its own power. Please mind, this is the 100% opposite of its original design. Listen, first we fucked Flynn, then we fucked Trump. Remember that? Money. The swamp always knows that it has more money than anyone who may attempt to brook its evil power. As the prosecutors have infinite funds to extend and expend attacking any defendant they wish, so also does the swamp in attacking any who are an affront to its power. First, I came to understand this while supporting General Flynn. His limited resources were attacked by an infinitely funded special prosecutor facing zero accountability over the use of his vast power. Follow it out. Prosecution has infinite financial resources. Defendant, no matter how wealthy, 
has limited resources. Money ends up being the greatest disparity of justice in America. All the justice money can buy, that's what you get, two bars of law. What we learned in General Flynn's case was this. We had to provide resources vastly beyond his own limited means if he was to stand a chance in facing down the evil government powers mounted against him. To do so, we built his legal defense fund. Link in the thread, mikeflynndefensefund.org. Boldly embarking on her own legal mission to save America from a stolen vote, Sydney needs exactly that same help. She can't and won't ask for White House dollars. Rather, she's asking us to help. DefendingTheRepublic.org. Sydney tells us, quote, The future of our republic is at stake. The left, the media, and a complicit Republican establishment are attempting to steal this election through a staggering voter fraud operation. The time to fight is now. We must pause on the complicit Republican establishment. The very eyes focalypse I forced myself to watch was on Martha's show. Both Mark Thiessen and Victor Davis Hanson were on. I like them both. Yet Mark had published an article in the Washington Post. In his post, Mark emphatically encouraged Trump to concede this election so that he might gather his support to win a second term in 2024. This is beyond hellaciously bad counsel. You don't win the future by conceding the present. That is simply not logical. Hogwash. On the edge of my seat, I waited for Hansen to disprove Thiessen's illogical counsel. I was left wanting. Hansen agreed. Pull back. Surrender. Retreat, live to fight another day. That was Hansen's counsel as well. Yet another TV content commentator I have loved, fallen. If Joe Biden ascends to the seat of the Oval Office, America will set its mode of deceit. We will have consciously chosen to become a nation of liars. Biden is a liar in full. In absolute, his corruption ensures that he cannot honestly lead America. What's more, America saw through him and voted Donald Trump back in for his second term in an overwhelming landslide. That stolen landslide is precisely what Sidney has dedicated everything she's got to correcting. That stolen landslide is what each and every turncoat traitor Republican supports right now. Romney, check. Christie, neither one of them gives a flying hoot about America. Their only care is for themselves. I trust Sydney. Who do you trust? What we need today are heroes. Can you help us? Can you be a hero? I say you can support Trump now. Hear Powell's account. Give if you can. If not, no worries. Put the case forward here at Twitter, too. I will be the greatest president that God ever created.